Hey. Hello, my name is Sergey Puzankov. I work at a Positive Technologies company, and one of my responsibilities is uh, to perform security assessments of signal, signaling networks, particularly SSL networks, in mobile operators. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to say what uh, the SS7 is. SS7 is uh, not uh, one uh, protocol. This is a set of uh, uh, protocol. This is a stack of protocols uh, that uh, is used to set up and release telephony calls primarily. Uh, then uh, when uh, mobile tech telephony appears, uh, SS7 uh, began uh, processing uh, Mobile uh, subscriber mobilities, uh, roaming capabilities, uh, SMS uh, processing, and uh, other services uh, related with uh, mobile networks. Uh, but still, <clears throat> until uh, early 2000s, SS7 uh, was an uh, absolutely isolated uh, network, and uh, in the early 2000s, one new specification, Sectran, was introduced, and this specification uh, <coughs> allowed sending SS7 messages via IP networks. So the SS7 uh, stopped being isolated. And now uh, any person is able to install and deploy uh, open source uh, software to a computer, and when uh, this person connect this computer inside a mobile operator, any mobile uh, operator. Uh, they can attack uh, subscribers of any mobile operator around the world. Uh, LTE, LTE-only networks use the uh, diameter protocol instead of SS7 for node communications. But uh, anyway, these networks uh, should communicate with other non-LTE world, that's why they have uh, interworking functions on the borders. Uh, so, the hackers can perform uh, some range of uh, S7 attacks even against uh, subscribers in LTE-only networks. Uh, governments and global organizations uh, are concerned uh, with uh, this uh, problem. And, uh, for example, American Federal uh, Communications Commission uh, denies SMS as a trusted media. ENISA, European Network uh, Information Security Agency. Uh, this agency issued uh, their own report about uh, uh, signaling security in uh, countries of uh, the European Union. And, uh, of course, GSMA, this is a station of all uh, mobile operators. Uh, GSMA uh, issued uh, a lot of uh, documents about uh, signal security. Mobile operators are aware about uh, this problem also, and uh, they uh, implement uh, different uh, security means, such as SMS home routing, SSN firewalls, they introduce security monitoring and uh, configure uh, the equipment uh, within security compliance. And uh, also they perform external security assessments. Uh, we started uh, this research in 2013, and in 2014 we, has, we, we have issued uh, the first report, and uh, now we uh, continuously do it, uh, and uh, we are going uh, to do it in future. Uh, when we analyzed uh, all the previous uh, SS7 uh, assessments, we found out an interesting thing, that uh, the network, networks uh, protected uh, with SMS home routing solutions only are more vulnerable uh, to a uh, some of uh, threats than the networks uh, without any protection me means. Uh, I think uh, it, uh, it, it is connected uh, with the fact that uh, uh, operator staff uh, relies uh, a lot on uh, protection means and uh, they do nothing more to make the networks uh, more secure and uh, vice versa. Uh, 
stuff of oper operators uh, without security tools uh, are concerned about security more, and they uh, <coughs> have to configure their equipment with the most security way. Uh, then, when we performed our security assessments, uh, we managed to bypass about 67 all SMS home routing systems we faced. Uh, then, S7 firewalls. Networks uh, protected uh, by uh, SS7 firewall uh, looks uh, better, at least the security level. And uh, we see uh, that uh, the penetration level of S7 firewalls is uh, growing up year by year. If uh, in 2015 uh, we faced no network with uh, S7 firewall, in uh, 2017 uh, each uh, third network uh, has uh, the SS7 firewall installed. Uh, in spite of uh, in spite of that, uh, protection level is better for the SS7 for, for the networks with SS7 firewalls. Uh, but uh, their pro security level is not absolute still. And now uh, I would like to describe some uh, basic identifiers and uh, nodes in uh, mobile networks because I will use uh, this information throughout uh, all the presentation. Uh, first uh, identifier is MSISDN. Uh, this uh, identifier with a long abbreviation is just a telephone number we all use to call each other. GT, global title. This is address of a core element in mobile networks. And uh, this uh, address has the same structure as MSSDN, as a just telephone number. MC, international mobile subscriber identity. This is just an identifier of a SIM card in a mobile telephone. And uh, nodes, STP. STP is signal transfer point. This is a switch of all signal traffic. HLR, home location register. This is a database of subscribers that contains uh, information about EMC, MSISDN number, uh, prohibited and allowed uh, services, and uh, some uh, nodes, addresses of some nodes that uh, uh, that is involved in a uh, uh, process of voice or S S SMS calls. And uh, uh, MSC and VLR. Uh, this is uh, one node uh, uh, that consists of two functions. First, uh, MSC, Mobile Switching Center. This is a switch of uh, voice traffic and SMS services. And the uh, second one, visited location register. This is a database also. This is a database of uh, all active subscribers. It has a copy from HLR database. And moreover, it has uh, some information from radio access system. Uh, for example, identity of the serving uh, cell or base station. And SMSC, this is a SMS center, uh, not uh, that is responsible for SMS sending and delivering. IMSI. Uh, I mentioned this uh, identifier on the previous slide. Uh, and uh, when the malefactor <coughs> tries uh, to uh, perform some hostile activity, uh, they are uh, need to get this identifier first. This identifier uh, itself is not valuable for a hacker, but when uh, a hacker knows this uh, identifier, they can uh, perform uh, a lot of uh, malicious activities, some uh, such as location tracking, DOS of subscribers, intercepting messages, and uh, etc. And uh, IMC is uh, a personal data regarding GDPR. In uh, the SS7 network, there are only four signal messages uh, that uh, may be used for IMC retrieval. First, three of them in uh, this list should be blocked on the network board border because uh, they uh, may be used only for internal signal exchange. 
Two of them, of these three, may be blocked on the HLR if a uh, network, mobile network, does not support uh, some vulnerabilities uh, for these uh, messages. And the fourth one cannot be blocked uh, neither on uh, uh, HLR or no, border. Uh, and SMS home routing solution is used to protect network against MC uh, and disclosure. And now I will uh, uh, explain how this system, SMS home routing, could be bypassed uh, by a hacker. But uh, before I explain how SMS home routing works, I would like to explain uh, SMS delivery process. When some SMS center needs to deliver SMS to a subscriber, uh, this SMS center does not know where this subscriber is located and does not know uh, serving MSC. That's why SMS center first should uh, request for uh, some routing information. It send, send routing info for a same message to the border. This uh, message uh, comes to the STP, to the border STP. STP translates this message to the HLR. HLR replies with uh, two uh, parameters, MC of uh, target subscriber and address of the serving MSC, this one. After that, SMS center knows address of current uh, MSC and sends uh, SMS directly to, to, to this uh, switch. And now, when uh, ML factor appears in the SSL, uh, they can abuse uh, this uh, dialog to retrieve IMC from uh, mobile networks. And now, SMS home routing. SMS home routing introduces uh, one more node into the <coughs> uh, mobile networks. This is the SMS router. And now, when uh, some SMS center sends uh, send routing info for the same request to the mobile network. STP, border STP, should uh, send this uh, message not to the HLR, but to the SMS router. SMS router generates a fake IMC address and send it and its own address instead of MSC's one in the response. SMS center delivers the uh, SMS to the SMS router. After that, SMS router correlates uh, incoming fake MC with the uh, initial MSSDN and performs uh, the second HLR interrogation process. It sends uh, send routing info for SM again inside the home network to the own HLR. HLR uh, responds with uh, real data and SMS center delivers, oh, no, not center, SMS router uh, delivers the uh, SMS uh, to the correct MSC. Uh, we have uh, two SMS delivery processes uh, here. W one of them is on the external side, uh, another one is on internal in the home network. And now, when uh, the manufacturer appears in the SS7 and uh, tries to receive IMSI, uh, they send send root info for a same request and uh, receive a response with uh, fake data. The network's, network looks protected. And now to uh, explain the bypass mechanism, I would like to <coughs> explain in details number and plans that, used, uh, that are used in uh, tel telephony or mobile uh, telephony. The first uh, couple of uh, identifiers, MSSDN and global title. As I previously said, they have uh, the same structure. They consist of three group uh, of digits. The first one uh, defines uh, the country. In this picture, it is uh, Luxembourg. The second one uh, defines the network in this country. country. And uh, the, first, uh, the third uh, group of digits it determines uh, a subscriber. The second number plan uh, defines IMSI. It uh, also consists of three groups of uh, digits. First one determines uh, mobile uh, country, 
This is uh, Luxembourg again. The second uh, group uh, determines a network within this country. And uh, the third group is uh, just subscriber-related digits. And uh, the third number in plan, this is a combination of the previous two. It is also consists of three groups of digits. First uh, two groups come from the first type. The, sec uh, the third uh, group come f comes uh, from the se second type. And now, when uh, some signaling message is addressed uh, by this identity, uh, it uh, defines a destination operator by the first two groups of digits. It defines the rule of uh, this address translation by the <coughs> by its type itself, and uh, defines destination node, but by uh, subscriber-related digits. Uh, only HLRs uh, can be addressed by this uh, type of identity, by the third type. And now, uh, let's look inside the STP and the uh, Look how it works. When STP <coughs> receives any signal message, this message uh, go, goes to the routing table. If routing table uh, defines the numbering plan of uh, a destination node is E214 or the third identity type, it, uh, it should uh, involve one more translation table and define the destination is HLR by uh, subscriber-related digits. If uh, the routing table uh, faces uh, that operation code is sent routing for RSM, it uh, sends a signal message uh, to the SMS router uh, to uh, involve SMS home routing procedure. And uh, one more note. Send routing for, for RSM message uh, is uh, normally addressed uh, by the first uh, type of uh, addresses by MSSDN. And now, uh, intruder appears in the SSO network and uh, he knows all the information I have just given. He is able to compile send root info for same message, addressing it by the third type of addresses and address a subscriber by uh, MSSDN. The written table <coughs> finds that uh, the <coughs> number plan is E214, or the third type of identities, involves uh, appropriate translation table, and delivers this signal message to the HLR, not to the SMS router. HLR replies with the correct data. So the SMS home routing system is bypassed, and the uh, uh, intruder have all information he wants. Uh, actually, uh, this intruder sh should uh, guess any random IMC that is uh, located in the same HLR with the target uh, subscriber. But this is a not difficult task because, uh, for example, on this uh, picture, uh, HLR defines by the first digit of subs subscriber, uh, uh, subscriber-related digits. One more technique to bypass SMS home routing. Again, when a subscriber appears in the S7 network and uh, trying to re retrieve IMC from the some from some network, STP routes, for example, to the correct uh, SMS uh, this message to the SMS router. SMS router replies with some data, but uh, <coughs> at the beginning. Uh, manufacturer does not know if uh, this uh, data correct or not. He needs to uh, send the same message one more time. And if uh, they see different IMSI identifiers in two resp resp responses, that means SMS uh, home routing procedure works properly. 
Let's look at one of uh, SS7 protocols to TCAP protocol. This protocol consists of uh, several blocks. Uh, first two blocks are mandatory, they are message type and transaction ID. Then dialog portion follows. This uh, block con uh, contains uh, application context name parameter. Application context name identifies the following operation. Operation itself uh, is coded in the fourth uh, block, component portion. And it, it uh, has their own code. Application context name and the operation code should correspond each other, one by one. But these are two different values. And now, application con uh, context uh, consists of a group some of some numbers. Each number has uh, the own value, own uh, meaning, and only two final numbers uh, defines uh, ap application context name and the version itself. All uh, previous numbers are usually constant. <clears throat> but what happens it, uh, if uh, a malfactor changes one of these consta co constant values to some unidentified or unknown value? Let's see. Let's uh, again. A malfactor appears in the seven and send uh, send routine info for a same message with the corrupted application context. STP. This is fantastic, but uh, one bit. Uh, influence uh, that STP routes this message not to the SMS router but to the HLR. HLR of course responds, uh, responds with uh, correct data and if uh, this intruder wants uh, to check if this uh, request uh, retrieves uh, the correct data they can send this message one more time and IMSIs are equal. So SMS uh, home routing procedure does not work. One more case with uh, bypassing of the SS7 firewall system. But now, uh, first, uh, I would like to describe a typical deployment scheme of the SS7 firewall. Uh, when some signal message comes to the border of the operator, it comes to the STP uh, node. STP routes this message to the SS7 firewall. SS7 firewall inspects all the message. Uh, layer by, by, by layer, and if uh, SM firewall uh, defines the message is hostile, it, it just uh, blocks it. Otherwise, uh, SM firewalls, f firewall sends uh, the message back to the STP, and the STP delivers it uh, to the destination node. Now, let's recall this uh, slide from the very beginning. And I would like to focus your attention on uh, send routine info message. This message is used uh, in uh, each uh, voice call. That's why it should not be prohibited uh, on the HLR. It should be blocked on the border because this message is used internally in the operator, not, not uh, be between different operators. And now, uh, our intruder sends send routine info message to the network. STP routes this message to the SN firewall. SN firewall detects that a message comes from somewhere abroad and just blocks it. That works good. Uh, and now uh, let me remind you uh, this uh, slide with application context, uh, corruption. And uh, our intruder <coughs> is able to send send routine for message with the malformed application context and STP. This is fantastic again. STP routes it not to the same firewall but uh, directly to the HLR, and HLR uh, responds with uh, correct data. SSM firewall is bypassed by one bit. 
and uh, the last uh, case for today with uh, SS7 Trojan for location tracking. Actually, this uh, Trojan does not look like uh, traditional IT Trojan uh, that uh, injects some uh, code into the destination node and performs some malicious actions. Uh, this uh, Trojan uh, looks rather like Trojan pony than a horse. But uh, first, let me <coughs> explain SMS delivery process with some more details. When originating MSC, some MSC1, sends uh, SMS, it uh, does it in uh, MO forward SM signaling message, and this message comes uh, to the SMS center. SMS center should request for the, uh, to HLR for the, some routine information. HLR replies with IMC and address of the terminating MSC. SMS center delivers SMS in MT forward SM signaling message. After that, MSC replies with return result last component, and this component uh, is translated to the original MSC. But when uh, intruders appears in the S7, they is able to send SMS spam uh, spoofing own address. Uh, because SMS centers uh, usually uh, have uh, white and uh, black uh, lists of uh, source nodes. If uh, intruder spoof, spoofs uh, own address by the uh, trusted node, SMS uh, center proceeds this, uh, all the SMS uh, procedure and delivers uh, spam message to subscribers. And uh, this component uh, returns to the spoofed address, but it is not sufficient for the spammer. Uh, to protect this thread, the cup handshake was, was introduced. This procedure started uh, st starts from uh, the cup begin message only with application context value, but without a payload of uh, SMS itself. SMS center should uh, reply with some TCAP continue message. That means proceed this uh, transaction. MSC sends MO forward SM signal message with uh, SMS parameters and, and text. After that, SMS center uh, uh, requests uh, for routine information. And uh, this uh, part of SMS delivery could be the same. After that, uh, return result uh, last component uh, goes to the first MSC. And uh, this uh, mechanism allows uh, stopping SMS spam. And uh, since uh, this uh, case is about location tracking, I need to <coughs> explain several messages uh, that allows uh, to get subscriber location in mobile networks. One of them is anytime interrogation. This message is uh, used by uh, some nodes of intelligent network, for example, for location-based services. This uh, message requests information uh, to the HLR. HLR knows nothing about uh, subscriber location. It should request MSC. It sends provide subscriber info message. Um, not MSC, but VLR, because VLR is a database. Uh, VLR replies with the identity of the current uh, cell or base station, and this uh, identifier translated to the source node. Uh, this uh, message, in time interrogation, should be blocked on the border. It is uh, prohibited from external connections. And now, our mail factor appears in the S7 and sends any time interrogation message to the operator. This message 
it delivers to the STP. STP routes it to the SM firewall, message is blocked. That uh, works very well. But what happens if uh, ML factor use, uh, uses uh, a TCAP handshake or protection mechanism to hide the attack? Intruder sends TCAP begin message, but uh, <coughs> they use application context what uh, corresponds to the anytime interrogation operation, not to the SMS. STP sees that there is no operation code in this uh, transaction, in this message, and uh, it sends this message not to the SM firewall, but to the HLR directly. HLR replies just with continue, proceed the operation. Intruder here insert anytime interrogation request inside this already trusted tran transaction. STP considers this transaction as a trusted and delivers this message to the HLR. HLR requests uh, the VLR database, uh, gets uh, cell identity and uh, sends this information to the hacker. So, SSN firewall is uh, also could be bypassed by several methods. And uh, as a conclusion, I would like uh, to say that SS7 uh, really uh, has a lot of problems. Uh, main reasons of them are uh, protocol architecture flaws, uh, configuration mistakes, and, uh, and uh, sometimes software bugs. But all these four cases I uh, described uh, were solved by uh, configuration changing configuration on border STPs. And uh, mobile operators uh, often, very often, uh, rely on uh, installed security means and uh, they think they are protected. By, but uh, I would like to uh, recall one more time, uh, about 67 persons of all SM home routing solutions uh, we faced in our security assessments was, were bypassed. Uh, to find uh, configuration mistakes or bug, bugs, uh, operators needs, need to perform external uh, assessments or a pen, pen, pen tests of the signal networks. Uh, because uh, this method uh, allows uh, seeing uh, network how hackers see, see sees it. And uh, mobile operators, operators should know the perimeters from all vectors, uh, from signaling networks, uh, of course. And uh, they should uh, continuously monitor uh, the signal networks uh, from security point of view. So that's all. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat> New defense is built, new defense is bypassed. Any questions? It's late, but not that late. Come on. Don't feel shy. If we have no questions, then thank you, Sergey. <laughs>